that at the world-renowned MIT in Boston, some of the brightest and most technologically savvy people in the world are trying to find out other ways we might record and transmit information in the future for all of us. The researchers at the MIT Media Center are also experimenting with new ways of sharing stories. So what we have here is called the never-ending drawing machine, and it's an e-book, but an e-book of a different sort. It's made out of paper, yeah. and not only is the book itself tangible, but also it's possible to incorporate tangible objects into it. So this book is networked, and as we turn the pages, uh, oh, what yeah, appears page on the page... Up. The idea is that people, even miles apart, could interact via the book, adding their own images and text to create a communal, interactive story. So part of the, the, the idea of the project is to make uh, interfaces for a creative collaboration that have that go across boundaries. So one is generational, another one is cultural, another one is, um, yeah, like acquired learning skills, you know, like, yeah. for example, I could play this with my grandfather though he was never trained in computer science or would not know how to turn on a computer, but that wouldn't be... But he can turn a, a page and he can... He can turn a page and he can press a button. A, That's a really easy, around, exactly. Yeah. And he can just have the freedom of using stuff that he finds familiar in his environment. For the researchers here, the key word is interactivity. The person reading the book is also adding content. They're also experimenting with new ways of recording and relaying information. For them, the senses of sight and hearing are just part of the story. A truly immersive method of communication would also involve the sense of touch. We want to build technologies that are not just in our world, but that are also intimate with our own bodies. Okay. And they're communicating with us on, at every millimeter, at every millisecond. Their idea is to record someone's movements, then allow a second person to feel them via the medium of a jacket as a kind of second skin. And as you say, the, the implications for gaming and, um, and a sort of narrative world in which you can participate. Absolutely. Imagine, you know, if you can go to, if you can download um, your data for your grandson who, you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now, can actually live through a day of your life. Oh, my God. Uh, and so you can connect people through space and time and cultures and, uh, and, and ages. Stories is what makes us human, and we need to create new containers yes. uh, to tell those stories is what really drives me. And I, th exactly, and I suppose it's, it's about it all being human-shaped, not technology-shaped. The technology shapes itself to the human, yes. not the human to the technology. And talking of shaping, I'm, I mean, Ken is very slim and properly built, and I'm a great... Uh, uh, but I, do, is it possible to try this on, yeah, do you we, think? We can try Should, it Should I have a go? Uh, I'd love to just to get a feel. Uh, we can, let's keep it here. Yeah. And, it's sort um, of on, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so so in your hands, uh, if you move your hands, uh, oh, yes. uh, you will feel oh, that goodness. it's it's as if I'm, I'm pushing you. Yes. And it's not like I'm I'm holding you and moving you. It's just a, a, it's more subtle. Yeah, almost more like a magnet being in, in a magnetic field, isn't it? That slight feeling of exactly. All these technologies are ways of recording and transmitting feelings, ideas, and stories. You could say that they're writing but not as we know it. They're the next generation of communication for a world that is transcending the written word.